All right, I'm out here. I'm gonna start up the machine. But before I do, I wanna explain something which I've mentioned and I'm doing it because I came out here and all the batteries were dead because it rained and I left the lights on and unplugged the charger for two days. And there was still enough in there to arc but not enough to really run the wheel. So I'm charging it all back up. I did one half. The voltage drop to this distance is so much that I have to come out and charge it back up. Well, that made me think to put up a video to show people that if you tap into the grid, I think you can see those wires right there with my jumper cables. And I've got it tied to the battery on my truck. And the old Model T, or in this case, is a Apple Pie Chevrolet. I'm sure any truck or an old buggy came by the edge, he could have charged up the batteries on the top. And in a minute, I will, after I have them charged up enough, turn on the machine and I want you to hear this one because it's frozen but the electricity is going through and it kind of sounds like a short when a conduit trips a breaker there's an electromagnetic pulse that pulls the wire through the conduit not many people know that and it results in a, a collapse and counter EMF thing and it makes quite a sound in the pipe like a big bell kind of sort of or a whipping sound while well, this thing chortles a little well anyway in a minute and here's a stupid quick little insertion I was standing here as the truck was charging the rack I thought this was kind of a cool angle all the way up there I lowered the grid way down so I could reach it otherwise I don't think Ed's really went that high. I think he put those insulators all the way around the compound. He kept his tripods close to the castle if he could to work after he quarried. Otherwise he would have a lot of voltage drop. He could have wires all the way out and drag the, the light out, the lights down out there. But it wouldn't be good to keep the big batteries out there. It'd be better to keep them closer to the wheel and the charging network, like the generator, namely. Okay, until next. Well, uh, I think the grid might be charged enough for at least that one battery. I only let the truck run for about 10 minutes. So, I'm going to start the wheel. It's dark in here. It's because the lights are cold. I'm going to display that operating for a minute. All right, well, you know that runs okay. You've seen it before. Now, I want to bring you out here. Oh, wow, that's working now. I was going to kick it, because every morning I've had to come out and kick it, but it's warming up because the sun's out. Plus, I had it <laughs> running, and it warmed up the coil and thawed the ice. batteries are good and strong but I have a sneaking suspicion that the relay up there is frozen with ice okay so I'll climb up and fix that till then okay well the camera started in my pocket so here we go I'm up on top of Mama Bear, and I will so indicate, but first I wanted you to see that relay. I had to dislodge it from the snow and ice. But now it's working, and it's operating that hammer that I just charged with the battery. So that system works pretty good. That thing's doing pretty well now, just for the little snap. All right, and there's Papa Bear above me, another 10 or 15, because I'm now up above everything here kind of a cool view there's the apartment and there's a whole overview of the pond kind of a nice panoramic just from mama bear here looking down that'd be a slam dunk yuck yuck and there's baby bear way down there just a 
going. I'm holding on to the camera and my life. Okay, there we go. Wheels are turning away in there. And the grid's still connected to the truck. So if I wanted to, I might go down and start it. See if the voltage really causes these to react. And then maybe Red had that hit and miss running, chugging away during operation too. I don't. I kind of suspect that. And the wheels gagging. Okay, let me go see what's going on. But I won't shut the camera off. Instead, I will carefully climb back down while it's filming. You can hear the machine this way. Everyone watching this video will get a perspective from Ed's point of view during his Sweet 16 operation. And I am speaking almost in intervals <laughs> because that's the intervals that I won't fall while I'm holding on to the tripod handles. Alright, where's this? Look at the ice in there. <laughs> Alright, just for the heck of it, I'm going to start the truck while this is filming. Let's see what happens. It might blow the place up, I don't know. I'm going to connect up the negative. Wow, listen to that. That machine is barking. You can hear the truck surging. That's weird. Oh, you guys can hear his truck rumbling. I right hear Hear the truck searches with every pulse of those units. That's kind of an interesting little don't hear too often in the real world. I should say modern world. Yeah, see that thing isn't even wound for power. This thing was just wound for demonstration. I've got little 16 in there. If I had a marine battery up there and a nice run of wire and some larger coils, I could really cut some something strong, strong. That one would cut wood, maybe. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to leave it running just to charge the batteries. And... Still working, it's getting weaker because I didn't charge it very much. And it's actually very cold out here. I need bigger batteries on that one anyway. That big machine depletes the little battery that's in there. So there's an imbalance in the system as well. But back in the castle again. Enough of that. I got the tripods walking this way and I'm back in the castle again. Yeah! Burn pretty good the old wheel! Notice the lights are fairly bright now because the truck's got the system going. That's how I did it folks. He had a simple old DC system that you could just tie in with a car and charge it. You hear the truck surging. All right, I gotta shut this off. Let it charge the batteries. Okay, so this might be a long video, and I don't care, because really there's so much information in here for all you coral castle nuts who really follow me and pay attention. 
I'm not just throwing out crap, as you know. Um, so what I'm doing is I got a car battery out here now because this is number 12 and this mechanism is pretty heavy and it dies quickly whereas the other ones don't. And I'm going to run in and turn on the wheel. Now of course when I turn on the wheel everything's all charged up so it kind of has this little skip to my Lou my darling and some snap out there which I'll display as briefly as I can. Okay, here's the wheel. Let's see because it's cold in here. Alright, now it's caught up pretty quickly. The lights are flashing. I have yet to move that relay over to the opposite side. Okay, so I'll go outside. There, as you can hear, that one's all snappy. It's all freshly charged. This one here, doing okay, but it gets weak quick because it's just got a probably one of the worst lawnmower batteries, and the voltage drop is enough to cause this amount of current to act, and you can see it. When I get a, I might even use a bigger battery than that or two car batteries in parallel that's a big box i think i can do that and then when i film that from up on the other ones down you'll see how ed really had the double parallel bank of batteries in each box i have a sneaking suspicion he may have had as many as eight batteries in some of those boxes some of those boxes are pretty darn big but who knows it's all about efficiency of the machine and this one's doing pretty good still. Pulls it right up still. And this one's all charged up as a truck. You gotta get back up the voltage. Listen to that goober. Uh, it's probably 15 degrees out here. It's not bad. Those coils have been running for a little while, so they're warmed up. The ice isn't all you heard it before. This is a hollow from here down. That's just the coil is this small. It sits right in there about that far. About the size of that collar holding it as well. I'll upload that sometime. Well, that relay's at least working now. The mechanism's over there getting weak. As the wheel just turns away, a sweet 1624 machine. So, back when I get the big batteries on the little bear. Over and out for the moment. We'll get some popcorn. I'm sorry, guys, but hey, I'm acting Ed's business out. If it doesn't work, add another battery. Bye. all right well we'll turn on the wheel again i've replaced the battery out there on the russell mechanism and we'll go out and see now you can see the difference You can even hear it now. There's a little more current carrying capability. It pulls pretty darn hard. Let me get it set in there right. I don't know. It's a rough mix. It's messed up. And nevertheless, it works for now. This one really snaps now. And now the voltage isn't being drawn from there. There we got it. When I start cutting coral, it'll all make sense. If it doesn't yet, 
which I would think it would, but I understand. Just try to understand that coral isn't very hard. It's just brittle. See, that's a pretty good rhythm. Now you can see that machine's pulling with some force. You can see it snapping to the top now. It wasn't doing that. I know you don't want to get your fingers pinched where those threads are on that piece of horizontal. That's where your wire or, or small blade would go and then the rock would go out here. I got a styrofoam box inside I thought about cutting for demonstration. I might. I just want you to hear that sound. Electromagnetic. Back to the castle house, wheelhouse. Actually, why do I have to do that? It's nice out here. Let's see if I can get up close to the garage. I mean the castle and you can hear the wheel. Wheel's pretty quiet now. It used to click a lot louder because I had the relay unbalanced. Staccato. That one's legato. This one's staccato. A little snappy. See, the tripods would be sized according to the machine that would at, be at the, uh, <laughs> let me rephrase that, let me start again. The batteries at the top of each tripod would be sized according to the actuator that would be at that tripod. This one here would have to have big batteries because it's number 12. If he had a different arrangement, like maybe a chipping hammer that had a huge coil for large current instead of a smaller wire cutting, he might have a whole bunch of batteries on that one tripod where the others only had a few. I don't know if anybody followed that. As I was trying to migrate my way backwards into the wheelhouse with no lights. But I think you can see at least the sparking. You can see it's still going. And as I've said before, once in a while it hiccups. And the reason it hiccups is because I've got an iron bar that came off of a lawnmower touching a half inch normal sweat copper pipe. And that's what's running this thing. If I had silver contacts, which they did have back when, this thing wouldn't do what you're hearing it do right now. It flutters and then the arc profile shifts, blows a piece of molten off and it runs more. It never seems to stall. Well, it did once actually. It was kind of weird. It threw a spark and then stopped and just turned the other direction slowed right down and ran the other direction. It almost died right there. Not battery voltage either, I don't think. You know, it's contact closure. I can see it. 
Grungeon gets in there. And it gets hot enough if it does and blows it off and you get a better contact for a while. Until the molten goop ends up coagulating and hot snot on that spot. Well, just for continuity, I'll go back outside and see how the big mechanism is. I know most people won't even watch this far. Wow, that one's holding up a lot longer than it used to. That thing used to be tired by now. And the car battery I got up there now isn't a real strong one, but it still is good enough to put in a car. But it's not new or anything. And newness on a machine like this has to do with endurance. Especially in this weather. Temperature is huge. I'm supposed to upload people a, a chart. Which I will. I don't think Ed had that problem. I don't think even at night he had that problem. 50 degrees below your average temperature is where it is here right now. Alright, well, I guess that's enough folks. You get the idea that thing is running pretty good. It continues on and on. That's what Ed did. He's doing what I did. Just walked around kind of checking on things. Maybe adjusting his uh, clevises and such. Make sure his rocks weren't getting cut cockamamie or catawampus. Other than that, it seems like it's pretty sweet. Sets in and does all the work for you. And then at night when it's all done, that's when it's cooler. And that's when you haul them around and you have a battery like uh, lights like that. That's just lawnmower battery or lawnmower lights. Okay, over and out, folks. I'm gonna kill a mill here. <laughs>